two of our X-Wing restoration video was supposed to be reassembly, but after part one we found that there was so much damage in the way of yellowing and rust uh, with this X-Wing that we are going to need to add a step. And so we're going to be doing a process we've never tried before, which is called RetroBright. Um, to help remove some of this yellowing. So we're going to walk you through the process and we're all going to learn whether or not it works and, and what the pitfalls might be. The first thing we want to do is get rid of some of the rust that's on these metal parts. So we've got all of them and I'm just going to put them all into a glass. And we're just going to add some vinegar. The acidity of the vinegar helps remove the rust. So that can just sit while we're working on our RetroBrite process. RetroBrite is made of four different components. The first one is what they, they listed as hydrogen peroxide, but uh, because of the, the strength of it, the percentage that you need, um, it's going to actually be obtained at like a Sally's or some sort of hair care place. Um, but it, this is called developer when you go to the salon store and um, it comes in different uh, volumes. So volume doesn't equal percentage uh, hydrogen peroxide. So what you're wanting is somewhere between 10 and 15 percent hydrogen peroxide, which in this case corresponds to a 40 volume. This is about a 12 percent solution. So you d and the other thing that you want to keep in mind is that this is the clear, so it's, it looks like water when you pour it out. They, it also comes more commonly in a cream form and that's not what you want. So you want to be sure that you get the clear and you get the 40 volume. You could potentially also use the 30 volume which corresponds to about a 9% um, hydrogen peroxide solution. The next thing on the list is xanthan gum. Uh, this is actually a thickener. Uh, a lot of gluten-free folks use this to put in like gravies and things like that when you're cooking. So um, you can find it at a natural food store or in the health food section of like a, a Kroger or something like that. Um, I actually ordered this off the internet because none of our local stores had any in stock, um, but it's a fairly common product you should be able to find. The next item is glycerin. This is actually, um, you can find it really easily online. Uh, we have a little bit of a problem finding it here locally, um, but you can usually get it in uh, pharmacies. Um, it's, it's something that you put into different uh, cleansers and things like that to soften your skin. So that's sort of the department you would need to look in. And then finally, um, you need OxyClean or something that's an OxyCleaner. It doesn't have to be the OxyClean brand, but those are going to be your four primary ingredients. In order to make the RetroBrite process work, chemically, you need to add UV light. Now, specifically, you need UVA light. You can get that from either exposing it to the sun out in a very sunny area, or you can buy one of these uh, UVA bulbs. You just need to be sure that the bulb actually says UVA on the package, and you should be fine. Um, we personally think that keeping it inside during the process would be a lot better because you would be able to maintain um, the the environment a lot better. You wouldn't have to worry about, you know, stray animals or leaves or anything touching your uh, toy while it's going through the process. Uh, you can also maintain the temperature a lot better and you definitely don't want this to get too hot in direct sunlight. So I'm thinking inside is the best. Now it's time to mix up our solutions. So the first thing that we have to do is get this developer, uh, the peroxide, and it calls for a pint, which is two cups. One thing that you want to be sure to do is measure these things exactly. And the reason why is because differing amounts of the chemicals can, you know, if you get the, the balance incorrect, it can really mess up your, your toy or whatever you're using. I think the original website, the, the RetroBright website, uh, was using this to restore old computer parts, so like, you know, your Apple IIc that got really yellowed. Um, so the plastic's a little bit different, but essentially it's the same concept. So now we're going to do two heaping t tablespoons of this xanthan gum. I 
pre-stir this before. All right. All right, so now we're gonna mix this for five seconds. Next, we're gonna add one level teaspoon of the glycerin. Again, we're gonna mix for five seconds and then we're gonna rest it. After it rests for between one and five minutes, we're gonna mix it again for five more seconds. While this is setting, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up a little small solution of OxyClean, which is a quarter teaspoon of the OxyClean with a teaspoon of hot water and just kind of let it dissolve and then that will make it a lot easier to incorporate into this gelatinous mixture here. We're going to mix this one last time and then we should be able to add our OxyClean. Alright, so we have a pretty smooth paste here. Um, now, one of the things that I read is that um, instead of just adding the, the powdered OxyClean into this solution, that you should mix it up with some hot water, not boiling water, but hot water first, which we've done, and go ahead and then add it in and mix it one last time. Not with the blender, but manually. Now, if you, if you go ahead and just store this before you add the OxyClean, uh, you can store it in a dark container uh, before use and it should be fine. Uh, but once you add the OxyClean, you have to use it right then because the chemical process is working at that point. So we're ready to use this uh, mixture. So we're going to go ahead and add the OxyClean. I'm just going to make sure that this is mixed in pretty well. And actually, on second thought, I'm going to go ahead and put this in our bowl. Delightful. Looks like something out of a sci-fi horror movie. All right. So again, it doesn't seem like a lot of OxyClean, but you don't want to change the amount that you use because like I said, it can ultimately end up damaging your toy. You'll find it's a lot easier on larger pieces to just put on some gloves and smear it on. So we finally found a use for our treadmill and that is to give the appropriate distance from the light to the toy while it goes through its retrobrite process. We're going to check this every couple hours and um, then when we're finished we're going to rinse everything off and take some after photos to show you the difference. Red 5 standing by. We subjected Matt's X-Wing to a 12 and a half hour retro bright bath. Uh, in the process of doing so, uh, we decided to not keep it in there for days and days because there's evidence to suggest that if you leave it unattended for days on end and keep slathering it in more of the retro bright uh, mixture, that you can actually end up damaging plastic uh, if you're not careful. Uh, we were as careful as we could be, but I always kept in the back of my mind, and I'm keeping it with this restoration, that this is a childhood survivor, and so there's only one of them. We're not going to be able to replace this X-Wing. If it was just an X-Wing in a collection, if this was just an X-Wing from someone's collection that they bought as an adult, and it broke, they could replace it. But in my twisted way of thinking, this beat up, loved X-Wing is the only one of its kind for Matt. So I didn't want to damage it. Uh, so what we did was we were a little conservative on the Retrobrite. But as you can see, we did make a market improvement. There's still some yellowing, but it just looks more like natural aging than the, than the, the dirty, filthy, turning toward orange that was happening with it before. Uh, it actually looks 
nice and you know a little better than average now uh, and I think it's going to come together real well. As you can see we have a replacement wing assembly for the proper white X-wing uh, configuration from early Kenner. Uh, with a lot of these wings and these are no exception you have um, micro cracking along these narrower joints. Uh, there are no full splits there's just some surface uh, cracking on this particular set and I looked for ways to reinforce it I did some test fitting. I feel like uh, I'm going to try it out without uh, putting any reinforcement uh, adhesives or, or bracers or anything in it so that I don't impede the mechanism and then I'll test it out and see if it works okay. Uh, the other thing that I uh, made sure was working was the light and the motor. Now this is a little challenging with the X-Wing versus other Star Wars vehicles because in most other Star Wars vehicles you can remove the motor from the vehicle to service it such as with the Millennium Falcon or the Snowspeeder. However in this case the motor is actually held down with a friction uh, pressure fit bracket and the only way to get it out is to sort of pry this bracket off and I'm afraid I could break the pins in doing so. I've also had X-Wings in the past where the light had just died and I was concerned about that because I really don't want to go into the process of having to resolder and replace this light. But fortunately, after a little bit of 3-in-1 oil uh, and some vinegar soaking of the contacts that we did overnight, I was able to get this uh, system working again. Now I will tell you, I started to hand crank the motor and when I hand cranked it, it took me a good 10 minutes of constant hand cranking with the button down and I, and I knew that everything was working because the light was on, but I could not get that thing to fire. And it was just 30 years of grit and grime and dust, and it finally came to life. So be patient with these motors if they don't start to life on the first few spins. But as you can see, it's working like a charm. Now, let's get to the reassembly and get this thing back together so that we can kind of see where we are. The first stage is going to be removing this because this was a test fit for the batteries. I'll get the batteries out of here. The first stage is going to be reassembling the wing mechanism. Now I already have the pin from Matt's X-Wing, the metal pin, the rod, running through the new wings. So the next stage is going to be reassembling what I call the R2 seat. Uh, the first thing you have to do is push this up through the bottom and then as we can see from our lovely rust marks that we tried to get off and couldn't uh, couldn't fully remove uh, we fit the spring over the post like so and then R2D2 there's a keyed there's a keyed pin it's square so that you can't uh, install R2 the wrong way you make sure that these brackets are facing outward because they're going to go through the wing assembly and then R2 goes down over them. Now this is where it gets, it, it gets um, tricky. There are two ways you can do this. One, you can put R2 back the way he was. Now he's symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter which way he goes, but this little switch that holds the, the wings up, the way it works is when R2 is pushed down, he locks underneath this switch and then when you pull the switch back R2 springs up and the wings close. But this rubbing wears away the wing assembly, uh, the, the wing lock after a while. So what you can opt to do is you can flip R2 180 degrees to the unused side if you really want a solid lock. For the purposes of this test I'm going to do that. You can always disassemble it and flip it back later for preservation of the good side. All right, so the good side is going to face inward toward the hole where the switch is going to be. We've got R2 locked in. Okay. And I'm going to put a screw. Now we soaked the screws uh, in vinegar along with the springs to de-rust them. And they came out with a nice patina. They, little, they almost look like antique screws now, but 
They are the original screws to Matt's X-Wing and they're perfectly serviceable, so we're going to use them. All right, so R2 is in place on his, on his seat. Now remember, always never over tighten screws and toys. There's no point in doing so. Now we have our, our switch and our switch has the spring friction fit back in. I was tempted to glue this back in uh, but I decided against it because it didn't seem like it was originally. I might go back in and glue this screw in because what happens is it starts to work its way off the spring like so and then the wings uh, don't have the distance they need to fully lock in a fully open position. They get weak and limp and then they kind of only half-heartedly open because this switch keeps moving on the spring. For now we're going to test it on the spring uh, without any adhesive. I have a feeling that won't be very successful but we're going to try it. So the spring will go back into the port like this. So that's the way that will work. The, the R2 will push down and lock under the spring. Now there will be tension uh, with the body of the ship keeping the switch down. But now that's finished. So we have that. This now has to thread into the wings. So you want to feed these tabs through these holes and you want to be careful because you don't want to force it and split anything. So I recommend one at a time just kind of gently with a little bit of pressure all right and then making sure your pin lines up on the other side and that looks good so now we're going to reseat the wing assembly his new wing assembly and then you you're going to want to use two screws because remember Kenner always used two diagonally they used one here and one here or one here and one here depending on how you feel about it. I like seeing these ships come back together. Uh, I like giving them a new lease on life and, uh, and, and seeing them in fully functioning condition again. Uh, they, weren't left, they weren't left to chance which is it's always nice for me to see that happen because too easy it's too easy to throw these ships away and, and, and then just think, oh, I'll just get another one and it'll be the same. And it's not. It's not the same because it's not the one that, we, that you were playing with in the floor. And you always know it in the back of your mind and then you regret it. All right, so the landing gear, you always want the landing gear to have its, its upturned toe toward the front of the ship, toward the nose. So what we're going to do is thread it and it falls into place. see if that's correct. There we go. Can I pull it down a little bit? And it's in the right position. Now at this stage, I'm going to make sure that all of my screws are in place and then I'm going to reseat the main fuselage, being careful to thread the light bulb through the hole in the front first and then set everything down accordingly. And then what we have to do is put the main fuselage screw in in front of R2-D2. Alright, and then we can put the nose cone on, like so. The nose cone always uses the longest screw. You don't want to over tighten it and split the bottom of the nose cone. So as soon as you feel resistance and it's flush, stop. All right. And finally, we put the battery cap back on, making sure to line up with the pins on the bottom. I'm going to leave this open and then putting in the two screws.
The nice thing about the X-Wing is that it doesn't, it doesn't have a lot of complex architecture. So if you have to take it apart, you can take it apart pretty fast uh, to make any adjustments you need. All right, so now what I'd like to do is test the wings. Let's see if they work. Because before, as you remember, they were a mess. Look at that. Perfect. Wings look good. Deployed. I never have liked this switch in the white X-Wing. And in the next video, I'll show you how they improved it for the battle damage version. Uh, the, 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 as you can see, it's, see it's getting kind of weak. And it has to do with the fact that the, the switch wasn't very well designed. Uh, in the next video, the final video, when we put on the cannons, the canopy, and the new decals for this X-Wing, I'll show you the internals of the gray battle damaged X-Wing and how they vastly improved the wing switch. So this is looking awesome. I think this is going to be a nice restoration when we're done. Certainly an improvement from uh, how it existed previously. Matt's X-Wing is coming along nicely. We've de-yellowed it a little bit, not too much. We didn't want to damage the plastic because there's only one Matt's X-Wing. We also made sure to get the electronics working again, and we replaced the broken wing mechanism. And we adjusted it, made sure everything looked good. In the next video, we're going to do the decals, and we're going to do the final bits and accessories, and then I'm going to show you the difference between the internal mechanisms on the original white X-Wing and the improvements that were made in the gray battle damage variant. So I look forward to seeing you on part three, the final part of the Matt Weber X-Wing Resto. Thanks for watching.